Good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. To all who are watching us tonight, we are here at the church ready to teach God's word tonight. So those of you that are watching, uh, we want you to come on and invite a friend, tag a friend, share the broadcast uh, as we prepare to study God's word together. As we prepare to study God's word together, we are in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, God has truly blessed this, this time of study. And we going to, we got two more installments and then we will be finished with the Sermon on the Mount. So uh, get your Bibles, focus your heart, focus your mind as we prepare to study God's word together, as we prepare to study God's word together. So let's pray. Gracious Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love toward us. We thank you, God, for your power. We thank you, God, for your presence. And we ask now, God, that you would bless our study tonight as we seek to learn your word and as we seek to grow from your word i pray that you would forgive us of our sin that you would cleanse our hearts cleanse our minds god as we now focus on you i pray that you would bless us god bless us with an understanding of your word god allow us god to be blessed by your word that your word would not just impact our lives but it would impact others through the lives that we live we just thank you tonight for all that you've done. We thank you tonight for all that you're going to do. And God, we thank you tonight for the things that you're doing even now. We give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right. Sermon on the Mount. Let's go at it. We are in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number 7. And we're going to be looking at verses 21 through 23. Verses 21 through 23. And so if you have it, I want you to get your pens, get your paper, as we go to God's word. I'm going to read from the English Standard Version of the Bible. The Bible says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And so tonight, we remember last week we dealt with the narrow gate and the wide gate. One leads to destruction, one leads to eternal life. But then we also dealt with false prophets, that false prophets, uh, we are to beware of them. They come in sheep's clothing. They are inwardly ravenous wolves. We recognize them by, by their fruits. The scripture says that the good tree does not bear bad fruit. Bad trees don't bear good fruit. That you and I ought to recognize them by their fruit. I believe that Jesus continues this conversation in verses 21 through 23. He continues this conversation about authentic conversion. And the question tonight I want to ask you, have you truly been converted? I know we use the, the term saved, but I want to use tonight the term converted. Have you truly been converted? Are you truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? And then the last question I want to ask as we open up is what's your evidence? So maybe you want to write that down. Have I truly been converted? 
Am I truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? And then the question is, what's my evidence? And I believe that's the point of the text tonight. That Jesus is on the attack. Remember, the Pharisees are watching. They're listening. The disciples are watching. They're listening. And as he moves from the gates and moves from false prophets, now he, he moves to fraudulent disciples, if you would. Fraudulent. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. The point of this text tonight, I believe Jesus is, is continuing to, to look at the topic of authentic discipleship. That's the point of these verses tonight. He calls our attention. He calls our lives to evaluate our discipleship. Am I really, am I truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? It is important, and I need to make this point tonight. Discipleship is not always an easy concept, nor is it always a comfortable concept. Discipleship is not always an easy concept, nor is it always a comfortable concept. The truth is, it costs to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, if you have not shared this, go ahead and share it. We want the world to hear this word, this word that God has, has placed in my heart tonight. It costs to be a disciple. Discipleship is not easy. Discipleship is not cheap. It costs to be a disciple. How do I know that? Because Jesus said so. If any man come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. It costs to be a disciple. What's the cost? You have to deny yourself. Deny your agenda, deny your thought processes, deny your will, deny your plans, take up your cross daily. That's the responsibility of the disciple to bear his cross, to bear this load, to bear God's will, to live out God's will and follow him, become a student, a learner of the Lord Jesus Christ. It costs to be a disciple. If you want to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross and you got to follow him. Here's my issue with the church. In general, we've made discipleship too easy because we don't really teach what it really means to be a disciple. We're not teaching people what it really means to be a disciple. And you all know what I'm talking about because people join church all the time and they'll come for a week and we won't see them for two months. They'll come back for another week. We won't see them for two months and nobody says anything. And they're out there possibly thinking they are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ when the truth is that's not what discipleship really is. What is discipleship? What does it mean to be a disciple? It means to be a follower, a learner, a student of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to contend tonight that there are so many who want discipleship, but they want it without the responsibility of following Jesus. That, 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 that's a profound statement. They want discipleship. They want the title, disciple but we don't want the responsibility of following Jesus. And Jesus is, is very clear tonight that a relationship with the Lord Jesus and heaven's, heaven's admittance, your, your ticket into heaven, watch this, requires more than just a mere measly confession. And so as we move into this text, Ask yourself, am I truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Here it is, based on God's standard, not mine. My standard for discipleship may not, is probably not the standard of the Lord's discipleship. 
your standard of discipleship is probably not the standard of the of the Lord's discipleship. Why? Because you and I would allow for more concessions that are comfortable for us, that that allow us a way of escape, if you will, to say, well, you got a good heart, you got a good mind. The, Oh, here, here, here's what we say. The Lord knows my heart. Yeah, I know the Lord knows my heart, but that doesn't mean that the standard for discipleship has changed. There is a standard. There is a standard for discipleship. You and I have to ask ourselves tonight, are we really disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ based on his standard? His standard his will, his agenda. And so tonight, what does this text suggest for us tonight? The text tonight gives us warning. You might want to write this down. That confession does not always mean conversion. Confession does not always mean conversion. It is also a warning tonight that works, the text will show us that works are not always evidence of God being present. Works are not always evidence of God being present. So that, that's a twofold purpose. And we're going we're gonna to get to this and get out of your way and let you enjoy your evening. The warning tonight is that confession is not always mean there's been conversion. It is also a warning to you, church, that works don't always mean, or the presence of works doesn't always mean that God is present. So let's look at the text. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Watch what Jesus says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And so, there are two principles that we extract tonight that I want you to take with you. When we talk about evidence, when we talk about proof of discipleship, proof of authenticity, here's what Jesus says. The first principle is this. We give evidence that we know the Lord Jesus by our obedience. We give evidence that we know him by our obedience. The text says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But in contrast, on the other hand, the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven, that's who gets in. Watch what Jesus says. Jesus admits there's, there's going to be people saying, Lord, Lord. There are people now saying, Lord, Lord. This, this, this twofold Lord, Lord, Lord. It is a, it is a sense of, of zeal, intense zeal. It is a, a, a sense of, of, of strength of devotion. Lord, Lord. There are so many people who want to present a facade or present uh, themselves as if they are the world's greatest disciples. Super disciple. SD on the chest. Super disciple. They say, Lord, Lord. They, they, they want everybody to believe and to think they are super Christian, super disciple. Lord, Lord. But guess what? Everybody that confesses or claims, Lord, Lord, it doesn't mean they know him. Come on, y'all. Uh, people, you ever met somebody who just name drops? They just name drop. Uh, right now, I, I know, I know Darnell Gant. I know Richard Perkins, two athletes. But I, I use Darnell Gant because I know Darnell Gant knows Isaiah Thomas, and I, Darnell Gant knows the holidays. He knows Drew. He knows basketball players, starters, and here I'm going around the city and I'm talking to people and I, I you know Darnell I know Darnell yeah yeah he know he knows the holiday he know Drew I'm calling Drew by his first name when the truth is I've never met Drew I just know Darnell knows him so I name drop 
We got a lot of Christians who are just name dropping. They, they name drop Jesus. They name drop Lord. But in reality, they have no relationship with him. They don't know him. And the question I want to ask you tonight, are you guilty of name dropping? I need you to help me tonight. Are you guilty of name dropping a person you don't know? They say, Lord, Lord. People have been in church 40 years, 50 years, saying, Lord, Lord. The question is, do you really know him? Do you really know him? He says, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will get in. Why? Because confession is not evidence of conversion. There, there's, there's but one evidence of true conversion. It's not confession. It's obedience. Everybody say obedience. Type it. Text it. Tell somebody. High five somebody on your couch or just touch your couch and just say obedience. 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 There's but one proof, one evidence that you have truly been converted and that is your desire to obey God and his word. That's where we see the difference. That's where we see the difference. People want to call Lord or say Jesus or say they have a relationship with Jesus. But the truth is, the Bible says that the only evidence of true conversion is that your conversion produces obedience. What does the Lord, what does the word Lord mean? Master, ruler, one in authority. Jesus is, is, is saying tonight. Are you engaged in lip service or do you really know me? The Bible says in Matthew 15, 8, he says, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He's talking about the Pharisees. They honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You don't ever want to be guilty of lip service only. There are so many Christians, so many people, I should say, who are guilty of lip service, but the truth is they don't know Jesus. Jesus says in St. Luke chapter 6, verse 46, he says, why do you call me Lord? Lord, and don't do the things I say. How can we call him Lord, master, authority, ruler, one in charge, but yet fail or refuse to do what God says. Hear me clearly, church. You can write it down. God wants us to know that authentic conversion produces loving obedience. Authentic conversion produces loving obedience. Are you obedient to God? Are you obedient to his word? Are you obedient? Are you obedient to his to God? Are you obedient to his word? Do you do you obey God and, and what God says for you to do? Or are you just into lip service? That means you 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 love to come and you love to, to shout, you like to make most noise and you do all this stuff, but yet when it comes to living the life that God calls us to live, we don't do it. I want to read something to you. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, Samuel says, and this is a one of, one of the greatest misquoted, misinterpreted scriptures of all time. Samuel said, has the Lord have great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, it, it is better. He says to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen to than to the fat of rams. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of the rams. What is Samuel saying? He's saying to Saul, it is better to obey God than to worship God with the sacrifices that, that, that Saul had had, had knowingly disobeyed God and set aside to worship God. He kept the best when he was supposed to destroy it all. And Samuel says to him, doesn't matter. You disobeyed God. It is better to obey God 
than to worship. We got a lot of disobedient people with their hands lifted up on Sundays. Y'all not trying to say nothing, but I'm telling the truth. Whole lot of people who are disobedient trying to lift up hands and tears in their eyes and getting ready to fall out when I sing their favorite song. But the truth of the matter is our worship is meaningless if we're not truly being obedient to God. Do you hear me tonight? <laughs> He says, you got you to gotta, you gotta understand that true conversion, authentic conversion, authentic conversion produces loving obedience. Loving obedience. Those who just say, Lord, Lord, he says, some of them, they're not going nowhere. They're not going into the kingdom of heaven. But here's who's going. The one that does the will of my father who is in heaven. The one that does the will of my father who is in heaven. Peter says in his sermon in Acts 5, 29, we ought to obey God rather than men. Well, what is obedience? Obedience is submissive conformity to a law or custom of an authority figure. It is submission. It is a submissive conformity to conform to a law, to a custom of an authority figure to obey is to submit yourself to conform your life according to one who is in authority uh let me see y'all know i'm just as bad as eric doing these illustrations i need i need a little help but you couldn't work at mcdonald's wearing kfc gear you couldn't work at McDonald's wearing KFC gear. If you want to work at McDonald's, guess what you got to do? You got to lose the KFC gear and put on a McDonald's shirt and a McDonald's hat. Why? Because the authority over McDonald's says that everyone who works there must work in McDonald's gear. You don't get to work in KFC gear. I've never seen somebody in McDonald's wearing KFC gear. And if you ask them, why do you have on KFC gear? Well, you know what? I just need to be me. <laughs> you know how people are. I just need to be me. I, I, I have to be myself. I'm living my truth. Well, you can live your truth, but I guarantee you, you wouldn't have a job. Because if you're going to work at McDonald's, you got to wear McDonald's gear. And you got to lose the KFC gear. And I, I believe that many of us who are trying, who desire who want to be disciples, but yet we don't want to do what it takes to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is to obey his word. Now, let me give a disclaimer. You can't obey what you don't know. Did you hear me tonight? If you want to be obedient to the word, you got to know the word. If you don't know the word, you have no idea what to obey and what not to obey, which is why you got to pick up this book. You got to pick up this book and you got to get to know what God says and what God has for your life. It is clear that just because you say it doesn't mean you are a disciple. Because a lot of people are saying, Lord, Lord. But not everybody. I want you to hear that. Not everybody will enter into the kingdom of God. That's, that's, that's deep, y'all. Can you imagine being in church for years, coming every Sunday, coming to Bible study, doing your thing, singing, shouting, getting excited, getting happy, tears in your eyes, and they even give you a home-going celebration of all home-going celebrations, not knowing you burning in hell. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a thought for you. That's a thought for you. That you could literally be saying, Lord, Lord, but not on the RSVP list. Y'all are catching when you get to, to the house. You're not on the list. Why? Because it could be that there was no authentic conversion. And so let me just stop right here and ask you, are you saved? Have you been converted? Have you been converted? Have you been converted? Have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? 
You well, Pastor, I'm I'm saved, but you know I'm spiritual. I I I I know a little something. I'm spiritual. Well, well let's look at what Jesus says. Jesus. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus in St. John chapter 3. And, and, and here it is, verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things, uh, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, convert it. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says to him, well, how can a man be born when he is old? <laughs> can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Watch what he says, verse seven, do not marvel. Don't marvel. That I say to you, you must be born again. You must be converted. You must be converted. And a true conversion, when you truly allow Christ to enter your heart, he changes your heart, he changes your life, he changes your perspective, and he changes your desire. Nobody is perfect. But my desire will always be to please God. I hope you catch that tonight. That my desire will always be to, to praise God. The issue is, as I move to the second point, the issue is that sometimes my desire does not always line up with my actions. That sometimes my desire to please God. I don't always follow that desire. Sometimes the flesh will come in and try to push that desire away. Jesus says tonight, everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Who will? The one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Now, we give you the first principle. We give evidence that, that we know the Lord. Our evidence that we know the Lord is by our obedience. But the second principle I want you to leave with tonight is that we give evidence that we do not know the Lord by our disobedience. By our disobedience. So evidence that we know him is through our obedience. Evidence that we don't know him is by our disobedience. Here it is. Jesus is saying tonight, I want you to hear me. He's saying tonight that there are some frauds in the church. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get a mirror and look at yourself to make sure I ain't talking to you. There are some frauds. There are some fraudulent individuals in the church who are saying, Lord, Lord. Frauds fraudulent individuals, people who are perpetrating something that they are really not. Lord have mercy. <laughs> something that are really, they're really not. Watch what he says. He says, who will get in? The one who does the will of my father. Now watch this. On that day, many will say to me, verse 22, Lord, Lord, many, look at this, many, will say many will say lord lord here is evidence of fraudulent people the first thing they do is not speak of their relationship with jesus hope you get it but they begin to speak of the things they've done lord have mercy <laughs> it's, it's in the text i hope you see it right now somebody's gonna have to change how they talk because now you're getting exposed. We're getting exposed because the first thing we go to as evidence of, of conversion for us is we go to the things we've done. But Jesus is saying you're fraudulent. If the first thing you can think of in order to prove your conversion or your discipleship is to go to the things you've done, then you don't understand 
grace and you don't understand conversion because we are not saved by works and i need everybody to give god a shout of praise right there throw some hearts up or some some thumbs up everybody ought to be excited by the fact that we are not saved converted born again by our works because if that was the case then that means that god would have to count our negative and demonic and wicked and evil works. And so we ought to be grateful that we are not saved by works. We are saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. That's our confession of faith. That's by grace. We are here by the grace of God that he has saved us and pulled us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Nothing you do could save you or could merit God to save you. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered, bled, and died for our sins that we might be saved. And if you want to be converted and born again, you've got to confess him, allow him in your heart. When you have a real heart transplant, it will produce loving obedience. He says, many will say, many will say, Lord, Lord, watch what they say. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty works in your name? Did we not feel God's presence last week? We shouted in church. I felt something. I had that one tear come down my right eye. I felt God's presence. I know I know him. No, you, you, you don't know him. They just sang something that touched your heart. Let me tell you something. Everything that's done in church may not always be spirit led. And I know I might hurt somebody's feelings tonight, including some pastors, but that's just the truth of the matter. Everything we see and our worship experiences in church may not always be spirit-led. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, anybody ever seen The Bodyguard? Y'all seen The Bodyguard? Y'all seen the movie The Bodyguard? Rich is here with me. I don't think he's seen it. That's not his kind of movie. He need to go watch The Bodyguard. It's, it's a good movie, uh, The Bodyguard. But at the end of the movie, Whitney Houston, Probably, they call it the voice, probably the greatest voice in history. You can debate it if you want to. I, 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 we can talk about that in the afterglow. But whether you say she's the greatest voice or not, she, she had a great voice. She sings, I will always love you at the end of the movie, right? Bittersweet, remember? Y'all know it, right? She sings the, 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 that song. Let me tell you something. Half of y'all start crying when you see that. Half of y'all start crying, start shedding the tears. You have to take your glasses off and start wiping your eyes because you've been touched by the song. Can I tell you something? She ain't in worship. <laughs> there ain't no hands lifted up. It's, it's, it's a scene at the end of the movie when it seems like she's going away, separating from her bodyguard, singing, I will always love you. That's not a worship moment, but yet we cry. What am I trying to say? You can be touched by secular things. Jesus is saying, don't look to your works as evidence of conversion. Just because you say, Lord, Lord, means nothing. But then he says, he says to the preachers, you've been prophesying. You've been preaching. You've been casting out demons in my name. One, one scholar says, Jesus says, you claim to preach. You claim to prophesy. You claim to cast out demons. You claim to do mighty works, suggesting that the end results of these things were not necessarily positive. They just tried to do it. Either way, whether they were successful or not, Jesus is saying, in spite of all that, all that can be done and you still don't know me. You still don't know me. Y'all know people, you, you, you know people that you, they go in them stores, the liquor stores, right? And they get these cards. And they got these scratches on them. Y'all know them scratcher things, right? They got them scratches on them. And they take a coin and they scratch them. I'm talking about lottery tickets for those of you that are a little slow tonight. I'm, lottery tickets, they they get them, they play the numbers and they get them scratches. And people got the nerve to scratch off and see you won $250. First thing you hollering is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Do you really think it was Jesus <laughs> that blessed you 
to, to, to win $250. That, that, that wasn't Jesus. That wasn't Jesus. See, I'm saying we put Jesus' name on stuff he ain't got nothing to do with. I wish y'all would go ahead and help me. We put Jesus' name on things, on moments that he has nothing to do with. And while I'm there, let me say that Jesus is not a God who is interested in moments. He's interested in a life of obedience. Moments, while they may feel good, seem good, and we allow, we got, we express ourselves. He's interested in a lifelong commitment to him. He says, you cast out demons, you preach. You do, you, you do mighty works in my name. He says, many will say this to me. Many will say this to me. Many will say this to me. But if you look at the first few words of verse 23, we see the Lord's response. He says, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Wow. I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you. Can you live with that tonight? Can you live with the Lord declaring I never knew you? Hmm? Can you, can, can you live with that? Can you live with that? I know we always ask the question. We ask the question, do you know Jesus? Y'all know people ask the question. We ask it at the invitation. Do you know Jesus? I think tonight we need to start asking more. Does the Lord know you? Does Jesus know you? Maybe we ought to start asking that. Does heaven have a record of your obedience? <laughs> Is heaven familiar with your profile? Huh? All of the records in heaven, all of God's records of every life are stamped creation. I want you to get this. Just like you go to the, the doctors and they have your file. Heaven has files of all its creation. And on that file is stamped creation. But, not, but there are some other files who have a different stamp. Everybody has a stamp creation. But then there are some files who have a stamp that says, my child. Hmm. So God has stamped his children with the stamp on their file. Heaven has my child. Does heaven know you? Is heaven familiar with you? Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. So in essence, he's saying true love, true love is seen in loving obedience to the Father. Loving obedience. Do you know Jesus and does Jesus know you? If he does not know you, then he will declare to you, I never knew you. Man, have you ever, uh, ever met somebody? Maybe with somebody familiar, somebody famous or something. You go up to them and shake their hand. Hey, bro, how you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you again, man. I, I, you start talking to him, and I seen you do this. I seen you do that. And after five minutes, you say, "All right, man, it's good seeing you. Check you later. All right, man, you take care." And you walking away, and they're saying to their friend, "Who is that?" <laughs> I didn't know them. D did you know them? No, I don't know who that is. Oh, he was talking to me like he knew me. I didn't know who that was. <laughs> that's 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 how heaven is looking. When we get up there talking about, I did all that preaching. I did all that singing. I did all that prophesying. I did all them miracles. I cast out demons. I laid hands on folk and they were slain in the spirit. And I dare somebody to explain what that means to be slain in the spirit. I slain somebody in the spirit. They, the people in this came with the sheet and covered them up. And I got an offering that night. I had the hundred dollar line, the ten dollar line, the twenty dollar. I mean, the Lord moved and people sold their seeds into their miracle and promises. I did all that stuff. But when I stand before God, and he says, I never knew you. What, what a devastating acknowledgement. I never knew you. And he says, depart from me. 
this this Sermon on the Mount has been rich for me. I tell you, I, it's changed my perspective on it, on the Sermon on the Mount, but on Jesus. Jesus says, because I don't know you, Jesus, Jesus is now a bouncer. <laughs> Would you please leave? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus now says, I need you to leave. I never knew you. You you can go. Bye. You may leave. You depart. You may leave. Wait, wait a second. But, but I did all this in your name. Bye. I preached. Bye. Uh, I forget who wrote that song. That song, uh, and, and the tag is, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And the, the choir is singing bye-bye and waving. That's what Jesus is saying to some of us when we stand before him, talking about all that we did. Bye-bye. Bye. He, song said, wave your troubles away. Jesus is doing that by saying bye-bye to some folk who had no heart for him, but only had heart, watch this, for performance. If all you're wanting to do is perform, when you stand before God, you will get a devastating declaration. I never knew you. Don Carson says, it is true that no man can enter the kingdom because of his obedience. He says it's true. But it is equally true that no man can enter the kingdom who is not obedient. It is true that men are saved by God's grace through faith in Christ. But it is equally true that God's grace in a man's life inevitably results in loving obedience. Don Carson says any other view of grace cheapens grace and turns it into something unrecognizable. What does it look like? He says, cheap grace preaches forgiveness without repentance, church membership without church discipline, discipleship without obedience, blessing without persecution, joy without righteousness, and results without obedience. Can you imagine that? The question tonight, have you truly been converted? Are you really a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you're not, I'm warning you as God's vessel, as imperfect as I am, as messed up as I am, as flawed and fragile as I am, God has given me this word to share to all of us that if you are just focused on your performance, on what you did, you will hear the words, I don't know you, depart from me. And here's even the worst part of the declaration. Then he categorizes us all as workers of lawlessness. He says you're lawless. He says you're lawless. Tonight, ask yourself, have I been converted? Have I been converted? Am I a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Does God know me? Does God really know me? Does God really know me? Well, Pastor, he made me. He knows all about me. I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> he knows all about me. I See, there you go getting religious again. <laughs> I don't want you to be religious. I want you to ask yourself, is heaven aware of you? Is heaven aware of you? I can tell you now, especially with this COVID-19, everybody just not welcome at my house, right? Somebody knocks on the door. God has blessed door makers to invent something very wonderful. It's called a peephole. Y'all know about that peephole, right? So when the doorbell rings or somebody knocks on the door, you don't have to open it until you know who it is. You go to the people, you look, and have you ever went to the people and looked and saw somebody outside and asked your spouse, your children, do you know who this is at the door? <laughs> and they come look, now I don't know who that is. And, and you know how we do it. Well, let me say, you, some of y'all know how we do it in the hood, right? Because in the hood, you got chains on the doors too. So in the hood, you'll open the door with the chain on and just it'll just be a little cracked. 
Can I help you? <laughs> Why? I don't feel comfortable opening the door because I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. When you stand before God in heaven, when you stand before God in heaven, this is really a question of evaluation. I know the Lord knows everybody. I know God made us all. I, I get that. My question to you is, does God know you in an intimate, relational way? Does God know you? You don't want to get to heaven to hear him say, depart from me. I don't know you. I don't know you. This is why it's so important for you to keep it real with God. Right now, I can hear Deacon Perk, Deacon uh, Brian getting up and singing, let it be real. Let it be real. Whatever you do for the Lord, let it be real. The, the inference or implication of the song is that it's a heart thing. You need to have a heart for God. Just as you know, God has a heart for you. Do you have a heart for God? Do you, do you seek an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that produces a life of submissive conformity? In other words, obedience. What we've got to stop doing, church, is we've got to stop trying to make our own way, make our own rules. Paul said to the church at Rome, he said, Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved, but I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, for they have sought to establish their own righteousness. That's what many of us are guilty of, of establishing our own way, our own thought process, living according to our own thought process, and we put God's word on the back burner. If it's hard, we put it on the back burner. You got friends, love your friends. Oh, I can do that. And then we want to quote the Bible, and we holding our Bible close to our heart. But when he says love your enemies, oh, I don't know about all that. I think Jesus was tripping. I can't do that. It's time for you and I to be conformed to God's way, to submit, submit ourselves, to obey his word, his way, his will, so that when we stand before God, when we stand before God, this is where I miss Carver. This is where I miss my old, my old folk, my seasoned saints. So when we stand before God, Cause right right here, somebody would just yell out, "Servant!" Y'all know y'all 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 hold the S E R long, servant. <laughs> well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. When we stand before God, we can hear those words, "Servant, well done, well done, well done." Tonight, as you go. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I pray that you will consider God's word tonight. Consider what the Lord is saying. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will get in. But only those who do, who live out the will of my Father who is in heaven. For many will come to me. For many will come and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? Did we not? cast out demons did we not do all these things and Jesus said yeah you did them but you didn't do them. you didn't do them <laughs> with my authority I don't know who you are Carver I, I implore you I, impl I implore you make sure that you know Jesus and that Jesus knows you if you're watching and you're not a member of Carver, let me implore you. Make sure Jesus knows you and you know him. There's no use in having a one-sided relationship. Jesus needs to know who you are. He needs to know you so that when you stand before him, all he's doing is welcoming somebody he knows back home. Listen, church, 
those of you who have continued to to support the ministry of the church i want you to continue to give continue to sow into this ministry as the lord has blessed us to still be able to operate to still be able to function i know that uh, california is now kind of backing off and reopening and some of the businesses that were allowed to open are now having to close again but the church continues to go on we continue to push and we continue to go forward because the ministry of the lord's church must go forward so i'm asking that you will continue to do what you've been doing thank god for you thank god for your ministry of giving you continue to support church the church and because of that uh, our testimony is that the lord has sustained us during this pandemic and for that you ought to give god the glory you ought to give god the praise he sustained us and he continues to sustain us so i'm asking that you would continue to give if you are not a member but the lord is leading you to sow into this ministry because it's been a blessing to you because you've grown through it i i ask that you would go ahead and do that uh, the giving uh, information is on the screen you can go online to tithe.ly and you can look up carver church and you can give if you want to mail your gifts in you can mail them to 5050 south hoover street los angeles california 90037 if you want to drop it off i just gave you the address to do that as well you can come and drop it off on Sunday between the hours of 9.30 and 12 p.m. And so I want you to continue to give, continue to support. Most of all, continue to pray. Continue to pray that God will continue to sustain us, that the ministry will continue to go forward. We thank God for all of our team who is pushing forward. Anytime I get a chance to say this, I'm going to say it because I want our team to know how much I appreciate them. Richard is here tonight. You can't see him. I praise God for Richard for coming to make sure that the stream would be uh, would be right and we wouldn't have any technical difficulties. And so I thank God for him. I thank God for for Darnell, for Ashley, for Eric, for Kiara, for all that are working. Uh, and let me say this: I want everybody to give a shout out to Tanisha. Give her some hearts, some love text her uh, I don't mention her name much but she is behind the scenes working hard to make sure we're staying connected that things are getting advertised that flyers are being made calls are being made to our members and so I want you to give some love to Tanisha she's doing an excellent job a, a tremendous job of, of making sure the church is connected if you're not connected it's your fault it, that's really what it is it's your fault and so give some love to Tanisha, a shout out to her right on her page that you appreciate all that she's doing. And she's been doing this since we shut down and she's been a great, great help. So y'all give her some love to all of our team, all of our leadership, Deacon Holmes, our chairman of our Deacon board, all of, our, all of them have, have, have done well. And so I want you to continue to support, continue to, tomorrow we got a prayer call, our high five, excuse me, high five at 7.30, prayer call at 9, the women's ministry at 6.30. I want you to, 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 to stay connected. Today was day 100 of prayer, y'all. Day 100 of prayer. We've prayed together 100 straight days. I don't know if we recognize how powerful that is. We thank God for all of you. And so tonight I'm going to pray and then we'll let you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, God, for keeping us we thank you god for showing us in your word what it is you're looking for you're looking for uh, conformity submissive conformity you're looking for obedience that that's the proof that's the evidence of our discipleship lord i ask that you would touch our hearts and god i pray that if we have have not lived up according to your standard that you would forgive us that you would cleanse us god and you would Allow us, God, to get on the straight and narrow path as we seek to live out your will for our lives. I pray for Carver. I pray for every church door that is opened up in your name, for every pastor who is standing, declaring your word, whether at home or whether at church or in another facility. Lord, I ask that you would bless us all 
as we seek to do your will during these tough and chaotic times. We give your name thanks for your word, and we give your name praise for your word. We glorify you, and we give your name the glory, God, for you are worthy of all the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Carver, I love y'all. I miss you. Look forward to seeing you soon. You all stay safe. Stay masked up. Don't go out unless you have to. And if you do go out, wear your masks. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. I'm going to get a shirt that says that real bold. Wear your mask. And if I see somebody that don't have one, I'm just going to go up to their face and spread my shirt out. You see what my shirt says? <laughs> Wear your mask. All right. Be safe. Love y'all. And we'll see you uh, Sunday if the Lord allows us. God bless you.